Hey guys, and welcome to the Mysteries of Sealandor, episode 10. Yeah? Episode 10? Yep. Is that where we're at? I think so. Jeez. You need, All right. you need Look to at switch us. into your camera or move your camera. Uh, what? You, your one job was to make sure that was right. It was earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. I, I expect it to just be this whole box. I should get this whole box to work with. I you do. You gotta but make then, me little. But then you slouch forward. Oh my gosh. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 10 of Mysteries of Seal and Door. If you're just joining us for the first time, we're not very good at D&D. Now, I've never prefaced with that before, but I feel like I should preface with the fact that we're not very good at D&D. Or at least I'm not very good at planning D&D. So you're going to get what you're going to get, and you're going to be happy about it. I feel uh, like what? setting <laughs> expectations low kind of um, backfires. Oh, does it? Why is that? Because you basically gave everybody permission to, to check out and leave. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Anyways. We're the best bullshitters you ever fucking seen, so buckle your motherfucking seatbelts, sit down, grab some motherfucking snacks, and get ready for us to butcher English and butcher rolls and have a grand old fucking time. There you go. See, we just Mainly let, just read. We should that's, just let that's exactly what we need. Start all of our sessions. You know, and, and the best part about that is she was opening snacks while she was talking about it. <laughs> I'm opening snacks. motherfucking snacks, so get your motherfucking snacks and we'll stop this motherfucking ride. <laughs> okay, so well, this last week on YouTube, <laughs> I like how she, she turned into <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. Like, I did. I was yeah. embodying that vibe. <laughs> this is why like it takes that. us so long to get started every time. <laughs> <laughs> last time, <laughs> stuff happened. Uh, last last that week. Is, uh, uh, <laughs> the uh, the team decided that, hey, revolution sounds like a really good thing. Let's get cracking on that. They went to a pub. They got really drunk. They got a whole bunch of grung drunk. They went on a hunt. They caught some velociraptors for tea. Uh, that's right here uh, in this particular gr Grumbula Lub tribe. Uh, they think that uh, having tea is, is, is eating... A T-bone steak with your pinky up. Uh, so that's that's the only important thing you need to know going forward because it's going to come up a lot. Uh, <laughs> they talked to each of their respective accessible important people. Um, Oren talked to the prince, got himself invited to the party that's supposed to be happening today. Um, uh, God, Mitnir and Sedimera. Sorry, I don't know why Mitnir wasn't coming to my brain. Mitnir and Sedimera <laughs> were uh, went on a hunt with Krebja, who is a particularly important green grung, one of the few important green grung in the entire village. Um, Greed went on a little adventure to train some some soldiers, and actually did a pretty good job bullshitting his way through that. Whereas Bropsy. Spent some time with what was, I, I would say, a product of inbreeding, um, and got them got them kind of like in the sway of things, and and is doing a really good job with the two important individuals, um, these two red grung that she is influencing. Um, in the meantime, specifically, the last thing that happened was uh, everybody was getting prepared or trying to find invitations to the party. Of what we've seen so far, Bropsy has been invited, and for some reason they think they get a, that she gets a plus one. Not sure if she actually does. We didn't think we were gonna ask. <clears throat> we sent somebody. Right. Yeah. Um, whereas Aaron is supposed to be there, and was said if he fucked up a little bit, he could slip himself away. Um, so where we're picking up, Aaron, you are still having tea. Everybody else, I believe you're more or less just finishing up with what you were doing previously. Dropsy, you were excused from um, <clears throat> Gromlin's place. I think it's Grom Gromlin. Gromly. Grom yeah. Gromly. So you're excused from Gromly's place to go get prepared for the party, um, which I do believe there was an outfit prepared for you, or there was supposed to be, but he didn't have it. Um, <laughs> And uh, Mitnir said you just got back from what you were doing, and you as well um, 
Creed are heading back from what you're doing. So you're all arriving around the same time in the longhouse for the servants, except for you, Oren. You are still uh, still in service to the prince at the moment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the last thing that you did was ask Orb Vallis to meet up with Greed before the party. So yep. I'll say for the next maybe like 30 minutes or so, you're still going to be occupied with the prince getting prepared for that. So you won't be there for this particular part of the meeting. Otherwise, the rest of you, I'll go, 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 I'll go, 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 go. I go go play D&D. <laughs> Did you guys get invitations to the party? Uh what party? <laughs> With the one we just killed those raptors for. Oh. So like I'm guess I'm still waiting to hear back if I'm allowed Point to go. Order, you've never seen a raptor before <laughs> and as far as you know they're called sharp feet. <laughs> Cuz that's what Kojo calls them. Yeah. Okay. The sharp feet for <laughs> Sharp feet? What are those? Oh, uh, did you not see us coming in? Like, oh man, Kraja had one thrown over like his shoulder and the rest was like, I mean, it was impressive. They're like, I don't know, they're like these big lizards with sharp feet, but not in the way that Midnir's a big lizard, you know? Different kind of lizard. Yeah, they don't look like me. Oh, Midnight is technically not. They had that. big, He's big there. claws. He's... They almost oh. killed one of the, um, one of the, the grand. But I healed him, and um, they didn't mind that I used magic at all. So I really like these frogs. They're very cool. Yeah, we might get to go hunting again. That was fun, <laughs> but um, don't lose sight of what we really need to be doing here, which is escaping. Right, but weapon. Easier to escape with a weapon than without. Well, yes. Definitely getting on the hunter's good side and making that a regular occurrence. Not a bad idea. Did they let us keep our weapons, by the way? Hell no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just checking. Worth a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this? <laughs> Just arm the revolution for free. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, this is all make-believe, and I still have my rapier. Come and take it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, so no, I don't think, um, I don't think that we're officially invited to the party unless somebody else has gotten us covered without our knowing. Well, whatever council members were invited to the party, the one that I was put with was not, so it seems mm -hmm. like we might just be out of a party. Uh, what, what is, what is this about a party? I, I was under the impression we were slaves. Cleary, hello, I didn't see you there. Uh, yes, I've been here for a while. I tried talking a few times. You, you... Oh, I, saw, I, I just figured you were still at the work. Like, it's, um... Uh, I'm kind of stand out here. I'm the only Vulcan. Oh. Uh, the but, uh, you know, it's fine. How is everyone doing? Where, where, how are you? You didn't oh. eat any more food, right? Only the berry we gave you? <clears throat> I ate the berry, um, you know, it it, it does fill, but uh, it, it doesn't give that uh, satisfaction. I know, it's not like eating a nice <laughs> meal with, like, lots of flavors and stuff, and, you well, know, especially only doing it once a day, but you're not hungry, and that's what matters, because most that, of the food true. here is poison. Yes, um, so, um, I got a good beating today. Oh, um, no. But other than that, uh, how, I was, it was, it was just... Fine. What happened? Fine. Oh, I am um, not very good at creating the kind of art that they desire, and I was working with the architect again, and I spilled a bit of what they consider ink. It's just fucking dirt that's been muddled with enough water that it's mad. stained shit. So it's mad. Yeah, it's basically like very refined mud. And... Uh, it's just, oh, I spilled a bit and I got the beating of a lifetime. Uh, I mean, granted, it was by little flobby, slimy hands, but still hurt. Do you need a cure of wounds? Are you hurt? Oh, no, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Insight <laughs> check. <laughs> I should roll for it. Was he getting slapped with little wet noodles? Six! <laughs> Yeah, he looks fine. I mean, 
Okay. Well, I'm really sorry that happened to you. And what are you working on with the architect, by the way? Like, what is he building? <clears throat> um, well, at the moment, he's um, working on expanding um, over something that they call the Endless Falls. Um and creating a new uh, a, a new palace uh, over over that section, um, but uh, you know there's there's really a few high ground that live over there. I believe that's where the party that you're talking about is supposed to be tonight. Ah, oh, so they're building a new fancy house in the fancy house district. Uh, y yes, yes, yes. Um, it's basically. Uh, <laughs> It's really hard to understand what's going on. They started drawing it, and and I saw the falls, and and in this falls was something that was written on it in in common. Um, so it, it was. I assume that's what they're doing, and it looked pretty grand of a building. I see. Do you know? Have you heard? Well, I know you don't speak Grang, and I'm really sorry about that. We should. I'm should... really impressed that all of you learned it in a day. Uh, well, we had very impressive. we had a little help. I think you were unconscious at the time or something. I'm really sorry for that oversight. But <clears throat> um, so like, Krabja sort of mentioned that like, I think it was Krabja. I don't remember who said it, even though it was like two hours ago. But uh, that like the swamp sort of like. He kind of thought like the swamp had the personality, like it it calls to people or like has has this will of its own. And I couldn't really tell if it was like, did they mean that literally? Or is there maybe something in the swamp that is exercising its will over these people? And like, maybe it's part of why people are jumping off the cliffs? Uh, there have been many theories about um, that the Lurkwood in general. Um, I'm not sure specifically. And so the Lurkwood is like a big place and the swamp is just part of it, right? Like it's not all swamp or... Well, the the Lurkwood is largely unexplored. Um, there's, the from what we know, there's quite a bit of, uh, of swamp lands inside of it. Um, it's... Uh... Oh my God, shut up! Shut up! Sorry, that was my insane pager. It gave me a bug that chimes whenever I'm needed. Sorry, I have to return back to work now. Good luck to the rest of you. We can talk about the luck with some other time. And he, and he just leaves. <laughs> hey, bye. Man, can't get any questions answered around here. Not when, not when DM phones go off and... <laughs> He ducks out and he, he looks really depressed, guys. It's like he was really excited and a happy guy before, and the, all that energy is just gone. Can I call after him? Uh, hey, Cleary, I think you're the best and I believe in you, okay? You're going to kill him out there and um, give him a bardic inspiration. He, he looks at you and he goes, <laughs> and then <laughs> heads out. Oh, so he's got an inspiration. Was that a D6? Uh -huh. All right, there you go. That's Cleary's D6. Okay. So, um, as you guys are sitting there, you are in, are now off of your duties, but you've been told to return and get the prince prepared for the party at the Red Lady's house tonight. So you've got like an hour or two to yourself to get prepared yourself. Cool. Not much I can do, though. <laughs> Yeah, and it'll take you... This is your first time being left to your own devices to head away from the palace. Um, getting getting down from this place, it's it's kind of like a labyrinth of these bridges that move between these massive trees. Um, there, Some of them are, like, straight up, like, look like massive redwoods, like, six times the size of a normal redwood. And then other ones, like, are just, like, so gnarled and, like, organic and not straight up or erected at all, but more like spreading out like their roots seem to like dive in and out of the swamp and create these massive structures. You see buildings are actually built into the roots themselves. Um, but up here on the grand, like the grand tree in the center of this swamp where the, uh, the Gambula 
tribe's leaders are is you, you haven't really gotten a few, full view of it before. And setting out just across these bridges, trying to find your way down, looking back, it's it's a lot bigger than you thought it was. You've seen the chamber with the prince, and it's probably like a 30-foot chamber. Uh, and you've, you've walked past the throne room area, but like all you've seen is just like a peek inside. Um, but it looks like it actually goes for the full inside of the tree itself. It's pretty intense. Fancy. Yeah. So, um, on your way out of there, like, <laughs> maybe a survival check to see if you can even find your way down. All right. Cannonball. That's uh, a 20. Sorry. You more or less remember the direction that you came from before, even though you were being led and forced and, and moved and, and pushed. You more or less remember where you're going and you head back that direction. And uh, you see this poor little grung as you arrive and he's like, I'm going down. Yes, please. Uh, all right. And he sort of like takes the rope and shifts the thing. You can see he is not, he doesn't weigh enough to counterbalance this thing. So he's got his feet hooked under like this little, these little metal footholds and his body kind of stretches a little bit as he moves the thing out. Get on. I'll get on. <laughs> and here you go. <laughs> It's been doing this every time I've gotten on this one. <laughs> That's this one. Like, you don't know if it's the same one every time. But noting him, he, he's... <laughs> screaming as he lets you down. I want to ride the elevator. Gotta be jacked. That guy's got to be jacked, man. <laughs> Anyways. So after a bit, um, you guys are talking, you sing clear away, and then Aaron comes to the door. Um so you're all you're all together to make plans should you wish. Hi, uh, did you get an invite? Hello. I did. You didn't get um, any plus ones, did you? Well our twos, plus twos? Or threes. I wasn't initially even thought of as being invited, so I had to sort of convince the prince to allow me in. So, However, the uh, Enchanter may pay a visit to Greed here. Might oh. be able to get you in. Hmm. Oren's going to look around. Is there anyone else around that like could hear us talking? I think you're muted. Why do I keep doing that? Make me a perception check. <laughs> <clears throat> Sixteen. Um, there are a lot of people that could hear you talking. They look fucking gone, though. It's just others, like slaves. Other servants. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna sort of pull everyone in close. Be like, I did discover a little something interesting today. Everyone, gather in closely. So the enchanter guy. I forget his name, but uh, he's partners with the uh, Black Crook. I think that's what he called him. Wait. So he's pretty high up in the chain, then. I think he's definitely part of the whole revolution that's cooking. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, yeah. we, we can trust this person. I think so. And him and the prince are very well acquainted. They know each other, well, quite well. They're pretty much like buddies. So okay. it seems, anyway. Well, that would be good, because, you know, if if you're the only person with the prince's ear, that's not good. It's good to have somebody from within that we can rely on. Um. So he may be coming and he may give Greed an invitation. 
My question is, how important is it that we all go to this party? Because I have a few tricks up my sleeves that I could use to get maybe one or two of us in, but it would only last like an hour and then it would be kind of like really bad. If... Hey guys, what are we huddling for? Oh, hi Pudgy, we were just talking about when we thought you were coming back because it's been so long since we've seen you. Oh yeah, man, it's been a busy day. How's everyone doing? Minnie, you look great, man. Have you had tea before? Oh shit, no, that's for the fancy people, man. I don't even know what it is. Well, we went and killed some tea with Krubja today, and we- Holy fuck! That's real cool, man! I'm going Krubja's to- Krubja's a cool guy! He's re yeah, he's super cool. Um, it was like an honor. We're going to try to get you some tea. Huh? Because you're our friend. That's really cool! Hey, I hear when Krubja does push-ups, the, the ground actually goes down. Is that true? I don't know. I didn't see him do any push-ups. I'll have to <laughs> ask him. Norris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hear Krubja. Krubja is the only grung in existence that can grow a mustache. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, just ask him to do it. He does it real quick. I think it takes like a minute. Hmm. Does he have Mittenier's belt? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't know about what a belt is, but, you know, it's, uh, probably if it causes mustaches to grow. It could actually cause an entire oh, well, beard hey, to grow. Hey, hey, I got you this, um, this thing I'm supposed to bring you. Oh, by the way, you were approved to plus one. As long as their plus one, uh, is, is well behaved. Oh, um, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, and here's your outfit. So, graciously take it and do a little bowie thing. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, what's the plan here, guys? We're gonna get drunk tonight or what? I mean, I know Bropsy's going to the party, but hey, Minnier, man, that was some epic shit last night. I wanna well, go to the party. Sethi's gonna be my plus one. Oh, uh, no and I think. But no, now, now all of you know how to make music. You don't need me to lead it. I only know the one note. But but that's the beautiful thing. All of you together know all of the notes. I don't think most of them remember last night. Oh, that's true. Yeah, like you should have seen like that's a lot of those guys had bruises. They came back from training today for, for military drills. A lot of them got the shit beat out of them. Uh, cause they were too hungover to do good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, were, they were pretty messed up. <laughs> I heard Greg did like a really good job making them do stuff. They like respect you and shit. Really? Well, I was kind of yeah. just... Alright. Yeah, they, they, they said you were like really concise and good to learn from. Like, a lot of them are visual learners and you were really good at it. Um, you just taught them in a way that they hadn't experienced before. Um, they felt like they were gifted just by being in your presence. That's really high praise, Greed. Wow. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Yeah, man. Did, did you magic they... them? No. I... <laughs> we can't use magic with our shackles, Mitnia. How would I have possibly done that? I don't know. You're the magic one, not me. You are Shackles, though, right? That's all fake, remember? Right. Yeah. Forgot you knew. Sorry, Pudgy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's cool. <laughs> okay, well, on the note of music tonight, they might have been super drunk, but here's the beautiful thing about music. Any sound you make can be music. So you can all just experiment and come up with your own song. That's the beauty and that's the fun. So... I hope you guys will all have fun tonight and maybe not get quite as drunk so that there won't be so many beatings tomorrow. But or get more drunk. Or get more drunk so you don't care as much when you get yeah. beat. Yeah. Feel the beatings. I'll tell you what though, you know, I make some pretty good music after I eat a burrito if that's what you're talking about. No, not to that kind. You know it like music. Are? Music comes from here. Oh. 
Oh, kind of music you, sounds you make that come out of your mouth hole, not your back hole. Yes. Hmm. All right. I, well, I you love... guys have a good time. Mittenier, I'll see you at the bar, man. Maybe. It, oh, okay. Well, if I don't see you there, man, next time. Dog. Is that right? Dogs, you're a dog. D-A-W-G, man. Sure. Mittenier is confused as all get out. <laughs> All right, I got to go do some stuff for... Hold up, let me read his name off a list of important people's names that I have here in my pocket. Slave Master Gerbit. I've got some work to do for him uh, before the party tonight. So you guys have a good one. Can I ask what kind of work you do? Yeah, I got some, them, some new slaves brought in. So I got to like get them prepped. Apparently they're going to be prizes at the party. Did they also fall from the uh, cliffs? Hell if I know, man! Oh, okay. Well, I mean, if you talked could... about it, but I was still pretty hungover. Oh, I see. If you could find out for me where these people came from, that would be really cool. I don't think I'm going to see you if you're going to the party before then. I don't think I, don't well, think I got time. Okay, I mean, just in by. case I don't find and... out until we see each other next time. And if you need help leading the prizes to the party, let me know. Yeah, no, that would be weird. Uh, I'll see you later, though. Okay, bye, have fun. Or take care, or whatever. Um, yeah! It's just... Group like... Okay, what do we <laughs> think that he thinks a burrito is? <laughs> Probably a leaf wrapped around shit, honestly. I mean, that feels pretty generous, to be honest. I mean, they are way off with the sure there's bugs in it i mean if t is any indicator yeah all speaking we know... of hmm? yes no go ahead i was gonna say didn't i grab stuff for tea last time gag you sure did i believe you did you write them down in your notes the parts you got oh like actual tea he got no. some ingredients and i listed them all out for him <laughs> And I might have been an asshole about it. One moment. <laughs> Maybe. Mm. I was an asshole about it. Uh, yeah, you just might have. Well, I guess you didn't get anything. <laughs> That's so sad. Okay, so I have another question. They said that your plus one is fine as long as they're well behaved, but I want to to clarify what we think that their definition of well-behaved is. Probably don't talk unless spoken to. Well, yeah, that's kind of the problem I was worried about. So I'm sure someone will speak to you and then you'll be able to speak. Well, I wanted to try to like, you know, like we did with the, um, you know, the, the plebs sort of, we showed them a good time and that, um, you know, together they can all make something beautiful, which hopefully they will not only think of as music, but also as societal change. And I wanted well, to I try mean, to do something similar with the um, fancy We'll both ones. be there. I could perhaps persuade the prince to let you perform. That would be really cool. And like, let's I, I also have no doubt in my mind that I could get the lady interested in that kind of entertainment. And if I can get her into that, all the males will be interested. Oh, that's good. Yes, if they are all after her and she says the tone, then that is that is a really good idea. Okay, so and like I promise, I'll keep it classy. We won't do any like you know if they think tea is super fancy and they want to be super fancy, then we can play this as like it's really classy. It's really like all of the big courts everywhere else have people doing this, and um, we'll just see how it goes. But uh, other than that, I will try to behave myself and not say too much the wrong people and mid near if i really need to i can make you invisible for one hour so you can go to the party but you're invisible so i don't know what you would get done there 
because like you can't talk to people because you're invisible they cannot see you it would be a dead giveaway that there is magic afoot but i could eat all the tea you could steal tea potentially if you're what is your sleight of hand like are you good at stealing things because in retrospect it might have been better for you to be the plus one and then i could just disguise myself as a grung and then we could all go i, I would just i just eat it not steal it I mean, yeah, I guess if it disappeared really quickly, I mean, for a split second, they might see floating tea, but... Yeah, I was wondering how that would look. Would just be floating tea that gradually diminishes in size? No, there'd be nothing gradual about it. Oh. Well, it's just there and it's gone. <laughs> Watch me make this tea disappear. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know how useful I would be. I just, a, a party is a party in, in food. And... That could be a fun little magic trick. But that's the problem, though. We don't want them thinking we can do magic. Oh, so I was like, look ridiculous. You have like, I don't know, me or someone. Hey, I'm going to perform a little trick for everyone. I'm going to make this tea disappear. And it's actually Mitnir invisible and just chowing it down. That would be a really good bit. If they <laughs> think it's super fancy though, and it's like the main parts of the party, yeah, you don't. You having it disappear it. probably not the best idea. I mean, maybe if you're disappearing it with your pinkies out, it would be fine. I feel like the main part of the party is probably the prize, the slave prizes. Yeah, like, do we know what all that's about? Because, like, is it they're just giving these slaves away to people who win whatever contest or whatever? Or, like, are they gift bags? Like, you show up, you get a slave? Like, is it like a raffle? Mm -hmm. Or is it like, oh, your prize is you get to beat the slave or kill the slave or some other nonsense bullshit? Well, he said they were new ones. I doubt they're just going to kill them off. I mean, that seems who knows? wasteful. And to you and me, maybe, but who knows? I mean, this is a weird place. Well, they seem to like to put people to work, and then in, unless they become completely useless, they tend to keep them alive. Just observing from what I've seen. That's true, but even still... I don't know or really want to know what they plan on doing with them to whoever's getting them. Yeah, I don't know. Could be similar to how they treat us, where you go to someone and work for them. To be fair, I think we're getting a really good deal compared to most at the moment. Seems like it. But I also think we might be... I don't know, a little more exceptional than most? It is kind of weird that, like, I mean, the Black Rock must have been watching or something to know that, like, we can do things to, like, just pick us to help him and, like... I'm, or do you well, think he I just mean... goes up to every new arrival and they're all just like, nope, I'm useless, and he's like, okay, maybe next time. He might have seen me blast the cage with the shackles on. That's that was very impressive. I forgot the bad thing. I I broke my cage. Yeah. Okay. We did some things. Didn't mean to. Well, I meant to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so what do we want to do? I mean, like Mitnir could be the plus one, and then I could just disguise myself and try to sneak in as like another Gran, although. They don't let the green ones in, and anybody higher up might be recognized. So they would be like, who the hell is this new blue grang or whatever? But I think you should also require an invitation. Oh, like actual paper and stuff. That's fancy. Yeah, Bropsy received one. That's right. Okay. Yeah, Bropsy's got a leaf. Ha having I mean, you I... be the plus one's probably better in the opportunity to talk. They probably like you better than me. I don't know. I feel like you have more in common with the ground. And I mean that in a th good way. I think Mitnir mm -hmm. has a good standing with Krupja, was it? Yeah. 
the hunters yeah. and the the green gang at the bar I, and I stuff. I don't think he's invited either. Well, oh, no, but I think you should work that angle while the rest of us work on the other angles of the higher ups. Like I don't want anybody to be left out, but I can definitely try to steal some tea for you as well. And, and... that would work. <laughs> okay, if that's all you needed to hear, then I will save the rest of my thoughts. <laughs> mm. Hey, slaves! I mean, servants. You're all talking a whole lot. I'm here looking for a greed. That's uh, me over here. When I uh, he walks up to you, it's just like this little blue crumb, and he hands you a leaf that is wrapped like a scroll and has like an actual seal on it. A message for you from Grand Enchanter or Vallis. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate your help. All right. Y'all Can... shut the fuck up in here. That sounds right. Can I open the message? So tempting to radiant bolt him in the butt. On I want to throw something at him. <laughs> Yeah, I mean you can you can open it. It's like it's just a fucking leaf with some wax on it. Is it in common? Uh yes it is. Oh thank god. What does it say? <laughs> uh it, it just says Good day to you. Please meet me where you met the croak. Alright. I just kind so, of look up and just go. I guess more specifically, it's like where you last met the croak, right? So the, yeah. The croak meeting location. I have to go meet up with the enchanter at the place that we went to the other night, Oren. So. Good luck. I'll either return or see you guys at the party, I guess. And One I... or the other? <laughs> or both. <laughs> right. Well, good luck. And I run off to go do the thing to find the All people. Right. Alright, so while he's running off to do that, does anybody else want to do anything? Uh, I can't think of anything. All, all I can really do is a, a sh I could go for a short rest after our fight. <laughs> okay, so you guys can easily take a short rest. Okay. I mean, that's... Yeah. yeah, we still have like an hour and a half before I gotta go. Yeah. So you guys wanna... So they just sort of rest and you guys chat and make plans or narrow it down as best you can. Um, but in the meantime, we'll cut over, I guess, real quick. Um, Greed, you head behind through the... through the swamp. Make me a survival check to see if you can remember exactly where it was. Oh boy. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> he ends up at the bar. <laughs> so I end up at the bar. It's a seven. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you start to head out into the um, swamp. And you're moving from like lily pad to lily pad to, to rock to sort of trying to follow the path. But the more you move, the more you look around, and you're like, this is just like bunch of dark woods and, and and water everywhere and so mist starts to like pouring around you and for a second you you are like fucking lost um like yeah you're you're like legit lost <laughs> oh boy okay um well shit can I start like marking the places that I've already been as I look around? Sure. Yeah. And I guess, well, I wouldn't be able to send a message to anybody if I don't know that somebody's around, right? That's true. You'd need to be able to know who you were talking to. I think there's a decent range on that, though. 100 feet or something, isn't it? Yeah. That's for actual feet. message. I think mine's 30 feet. Oh, your telepathic one got gotcha. you. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you're looking around and there's like mist sort of like poured in and you can just hear the random sounds of critters 
in, in the, the swamp and the Lurkwood itself. Because it was about a 15 minute walk away from the village to this tree. So you're, you moved out about, I'd say probably about five minutes before you were just like, so, I mean, like, I would say make me another survival check. You could probably make your way back, or you can make another one and see if you can try to catch your bearings again. Um, let's, let's try to catch the bearings. What's the worst that happens? Sharp, sharp claws. All right, so another survival check? Mm-hmm. Eight. Oh, cool. Eight. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you you were attempting to to find your bearings and keep moving forward. So you start heading out and you see a tree in the distance. You're like, oh, that's got to be it. So you start heading further and further in. And as you do, it gets darker and darker around you. You see pretty much nothing around you but mist. You can't even see the swamp anymore. You can't tell where you're stepping. You feel every now and again, whoop, your foot goes into something wet. You're legit fucking lost now. Um, looking around you in all directions, it's unrecognizable. And what was once like the sounds of, you know, swamp life and and, and little, little little cricket sounds and everything like that has gone silent. Something about the area that you have wandered into feels more wild and not in a good way. <laughs> So, you know, that's 15, 20 minutes. What are you guys up to? Hmm. Because we're just chit-chatting. Okay, we take our <laughs> short rest and, um... I don't know. Have you guys eaten today? Mm. Uh, I made the, the good berries in uh, the yeah, morning for Cleary, so... Everybody had berries, whether or not they actually ate them. Yep. We, we are good. I had some. I think he called it sushimi. It's kind of like I don't know, raw fish or something. It was mm -hmm. quite good. Weird. Not non-poisoned, of course. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> I get the good food up in the palace. Mm. Must be nice. I. I'd bring you guys some, but that'd be kind of weird if I was filling my pockets on the way out. Yeah, we don't want to raise any suspicions or anything, and like, there's nothing wrong with the berries, that's totally fine. Uh, I am looking forward to a day, though, where I don't have to get trampled by kids. I will say, when we do finally get out of here, we need to sit down for a good meal. Ugh. You know what I want more than anything? A freaking bath. Like a nice, proper, hot bath. So so I'm hearing a nice in with food and, you know, lodging. Yeah, I think bathhouse, then tavern for a big meal. I would, I mean, the first fucking river I see, I swear to God I'm going in. Like, the I will not be picky. But a nice proper <laughs> hot bath sounds really, really good. I definitely took those for granted. It's the non-swamp water. <laughs> and okay, so you guys sit there swamp. and just keep chatting for the next... <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> pretty much until you're ready to go. Just um, daydreaming. <laughs> Listing yeah. off. And then I want to do this, and then this. I want a big turkey leg, I want a mug of ale, <laughs> some potatoes. Some good uh, wine. So... <laughs> That's going to occupy you guys until you are getting ready for the party, and I'll come back to you when it's time to actually get ready for the party. Um, but definitely until Aran leaves to go talk to... Get the prince ready. Get the prince ready. Um, okay, so, Greed. Yep. Make me a perception check. You are in a completely unrecognizable place, and it is fucking silent. You can hear your own heartbeat. 12. So, okay, looking out into the mist, it's like an ocean of pea soup. It is so hard to see anything. 
but you do see a small bit of light in the far distance. And this Can tiny bit of light is actually two small little orbs. Look very much like eyes that are sort of following you. Can I carefully inch closer? Sure. And just see how it reacts. Okay, so you begin to creep towards these sort of like little little tiny orbs moving through the area. They're sort of an undistinguishable color. And, and the closer you get, your heart starts beating faster, like strangely and without control. You're not sure why, but you're feeling fear. And as these little orbs get just a little bit closer into view, you see horns twisting away from them and hair that seems to be flowing as if underwater, an indistinguishable color as this creature turns its head towards you and begins to charge towards you. You recognize it immediately from a dream you've had recently. Oh, fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> I immediately throw an Eldritch Blast. Okay, you're going to fight it? Roll initiative. Off in the distance. Ah. Oh, hey, nat 20 for a total of 20. Yeah, you go first. So, Eldritch Blast. Yeah, Eldritch Blast. Let's do that. 14 total. Okay. So, you fired an Eldritch Blast at this thing. And you see, as it, become, it begins running towards you, the Eldritch Blast hits it. And you watch as the entire form of this thing twists. Like, as if... You know in Naruto, where... where where the guy does the thing and twists. Oh my god. It's yeah. kind of like that, but it's just this kaleidoscope of color as it just twists and fractures and then appears right on top of you and starts screaming in your face. It grabs you and it throws you to the ground going, Ow! and it pulls you down. You see its slitted eyes moving sideways and it just holds you to the ground. I need you to make me a strength check for grapple. Oh, fuck no. This can only go well. Just a strength check? I believe so, for grappling. Five. <laughs> cool. It definitely beat you by a lot. <laughs> As it holds you down, you look at it. It resembles a very strange, like, almost like cosmic fawn. Now that you're getting a good look at it. It's sitting, like, on top of you and just going... <sighs> Done. Creepy. And it's reaching out towards your book. Is it my turn again? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you want to persist in combat, yes. It is not attacking you. It is screaming at you and telling you to return. Well, I'm grappled, right? Yes, you're grappled. So I can still cast spells, I just can't move. Yeah, you can cast at it if you want. Um, how bad of an idea is this? Probably horrible. Um, well, he never came spell, back spell, and we spells. didn't see him at the party. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, fuck it. Can I try casting Arms of Hadar? just to get it the fuck off of me? Sure. <laughs> Do those push back, too, or no? Uh, oh, no. It just means that they can't take reactions if they fail a strength saving throw. Gotcha. I mean, you can cast Arms of Hadar if you want, though. Sure. I already said I was going to do it. I don't want to... Alright, is this a saving throw? <laughs> yeah, it's a strength saving throw. <laughs> uh, I was a 22. 
Jesus fucking. Alright. It takes half damage if it takes damage. Uh, uh, I mean, you can roll damage. You don't know if it, <laughs> you don't know if it takes it or not, but you can roll damage. Everyone's going to a party, and I'm getting freaking metrically fucked by a aberration satyr. Ten total necrotic, but it would take half, so five. Okay, so you you go and you and you watch as these as these like strange eldritch tentacles like fly out of your body and start like buffeting this thing, and it just like as it grabs onto it, it just goes. <laughs> as if it's cackling at you. And then you watch as from the fog and the distance, another tentacle flies out and grabs it, and it goes, and it pulls it off into the distance, disappearing. I immediately stand up and try to book it back the way I came. <laughs> Just run. <laughs> Um, you're fucking terrified. That's the scariest thing you've ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> it's, um, whatever this was, you can't tell. Like, you can feel where it gripped you. Um, and you can see, like, on your chest, there's, like, these little little puncture marks that sort of, like, are forcing, like, it's not blood, whatever's coming out of you, but it's, like, this sort of, like, crystalline liquid that was in your arm sort of poured out slightly. Um... And, and as you start running, 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 um, gosh, just roll me uh, another survival check, I guess. These go so well for me. <laughs> God, cocking. All right, so we've got seven, <laughs> eight, nine. As you... <laughs> for your survival check so far. As you're running through the forest, you, uh, like, or the forest, the swamp, you find yourself, like, sinking into the water, and you start, like, freaking the fuck out as you're pulled, like, sl fat, like slower, slower, like, deeper in, and then suddenly you feel something grab onto you and just sort of pull you and retch you out. And you look and you see a billowing cloak. <sighs> just you're really fucking... bad at navigation, aren't you? It's been a long fucking time. Oh. <sighs> right. Thanks for the save. No, it's fine. I'm always around, keeping an eye out. Saw you go into the thicket and come running out looking like fucking chicken shit. So you didn't see <clears throat> anything that happened in there? I saw you running through swamp lands. I mean, there's not much out here. You're pretty close to the village. Right. Okay. Um, can you point me in the direction of where we met? <clears throat> it's fine. The other. We're far enough out we can go together. And he just walks with you. Like, looking back the direction you came from, there's like not even any fog. I just start muttering under my breath, trying to figure out what the fuck, like recounting it to myself. And follow the grung. <laughs> okay. While you're making your way back to the meeting that you're supposed to be going to, <laughs> it's about time for you to go, Oren, back to take care of the prince and get him prepared. Is there anything you would like to do to get yourself prepared for the party? Or are you just going as are? As he is. I mean, only got the one outfit, so yep. Okay. So you, you don your outfit. Make sure it looks nice and as clean as it can. Probably don't even put that much effort into that. And you head off. So I'll just ask Seti real quick. Hey, Seti, do, do you know that one spell? You know the one you were talking about before where you, like, clean things or whatever? Uh, yeah, prestidigitation. Do you know that one? I know it, but um, it's not like 
I can't do it right now. Oh, okay. Just thought I'd check. If I could, I wouldn't have been talking up that bath so much. Yeah. The outfit's getting a little dirty in the swamps here, but... He's not pleasant. Although, I don't think the ground minds so much, like... I guess we'll find you. All right, I'll see you all later. Good luck. Bye. And I'll head out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys got your short rest and everything like that. Um, is there anything you guys want to do in preparation for the party? Um, <laughs> I like make sure my drum is like good to go. It's nice and like clean, and the skin is still tight and everything. And um, do I even wait? Do I even have that anymore? Your drum? Yeah, did they give it back to us with No, with they gave you your clothes. clothes. Just the clothes. Okay, so never mind. Um <laughs> I might just do like some vocal warm-ups and uh you know. Mommy made me munch my M and M's. <laughs> <laughs> Mint will uh, I'll be sitting there just like, you know, cleaning cleaning scales and so just in case I get to go in, I'm not dirty, because you know he mentioned being dirty. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Bropsy? I don't know what I can do to prepare, so... No? You gotta put your fancy outfit on. Oh, I thought that was a given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you, you put your outfit on, or at least you take a look at it. It looks like something that was strung together. It's made out of gold coins. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, are you sure this isn't for River? I mean, <laughs> no. can't, anyways, can't you put it on? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you what? can. It, it looks like it was made for someone about your size or a grung size, maybe. Um, but it looks like it, it it's kind of reminiscent of like a belly dancer's outfit, but it's like just a bunch of like gold coins of different denominations, just like strewn together, uh -huh. like all over it. Like, and it's and it seems like it's sort of like you wear like almost like a shawl with like some fabrics that go between it. It's not so much pretty as it is shiny. <laughs> okay. uh, it's 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 a bit gaudy. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, but it's probably about a thousand gold. Oh just, yes, give it. Take straight, just straight. <laughs> Thanks for this outfit. money. <laughs> just straight fucking outfit. It must be. Is it heavy? Could I still oh, fly in it? Yeah, it's very heavy. It's probably like <sighs> twenty pounds. Or something like Jesus. that. Okay, well, thanks for the money. I'll uh, see what I can do with this. Right. So I'll you figure it out. <laughs> um, meanwhile, the black croak leads you. It's about five more minutes till you get to, to where Orvalis is waiting. And he says, It took you long enough. Did you get lost? Hmm? It would appear so. I'm not too used to swamplands. You'll have to forgive me. Well, it's fine. Mm. Welcome back. The Black Croak. It's fine, Orvalis. You don't need to be so... judgmental. It's a stupid name! <laughs> it's, it's a symbol. A symbol of what? Bad puns? <laughs> Savage. Uh, see you. Or rather, won't see you at the party. And he leaps away. <laughs> he's very strange. But he's got a good heart. Has he always been like that? Ever since he was a young grung. He's had a hard life. But he's doing good with you. So, you're greed, are you? Don't forget, this is a three foot tall orange grunt. He's looking up at you, and he's got a little Fu Manchu. Yes, it is a pleasure. And I give a, like, kind of formal bow. Hmm. You look like shit. A cold sweat. The forest can show you many terrifying things if you aren't careful. Reveal many things about you, this enchanted swamp. 
I will be sure to take that into consideration the next time I find myself alone around here. Be careful. Especially those that the Lurkwood calls to. It could be a very dangerous place. Now, I believe, um, the, the, the Orin, was it? Said that you needed an audience, something about the party tonight. Yes, we are trying to uh, find ourselves among the company at this party. But uh, my uh, oh, owner yes, yes. <laughs> with the council was not invited, so therefore I cannot not. take me. I believe if I've been informed correctly, your owner is um, a purple crown. Yes, correct. Mm. Sisselgert, is it? Yes, actually. <laughs> mm. He's not a bad grum, but he does have his pride. Well, I actually had plans to be able to get at least three of you into the party should be necessary. How many do you need? Uh, if I remember correctly, just two. But we do have a friend, Cleary, who might want to come along. As he is proven as the rest of you. Not exactly, but I'm pretending to be a good person for once. Make a persuasion check. Fourteen. <laughs> Very well. I prepare three for you. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> he reaches into his cloak and pulls out three leaf scrolls. Invitations. You are from the Lub 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 family. They are an old family and they live on the edge of Grumbulalub village. So they are of high tier, not quite royalty, but. They're obscure enough and known enough that you should be able to get in. They wouldn't attend on their own, of course. Much obliged. I appreciate it. Yes, of course. And then there are these. And he holds out in front of you what looks like three very crude-looking rings. And what do these do? Um, well, they turn you into Grum. Oh. That's perfect. Okay. They only last for a few hours. I believe it's four, four hours would be pushing it. And they can only be used once per day. That works well, but we'll still have all of our normal capabilities. Um, well, not so much in the strength department. <laughs> uh, you will be, in fact, transformed into a Grom, not have the appearance of one. Oh, gotcha. I see. I'll have to tell, uh... But your mental faculties will down. remain completely their own. We are a very intelligent race, if we don't show it so often. That said, um, whenever you do transform, you may choose your color. Choose wisely. I believe the Lululub family was... Who um, are they? Um, Red Grum, watch. Oh, it doesn't matter. One way or another, you should be fine. All right, very well. As long as red or orange would be above the level, correct? Oh, no, of course. Red Grum would be pretty above level to enter. It's the purple, sort of a invite by invite basis. Sesagrit is just not that well known. There will be purple Grum there. That said, um, should you wish to go as servants or something else, feel free to to find your own way in. But should you use those, I do expect you to act 
like a grung. I'm the one who drafted those invitations. Should they be revealed? <laughs> the revolution may be short and enchanter. Understood. We appreciate you taking uh, a risk on our behalf. It's not on your behalf that I'm taking a risk. It's on the behalf of the grung here. The little ones, the green grungs, all colors. Because to be true, we are very, very wrong society. It needs to be fixed. I couldn't agree more. Well, be careful. Try not to get yourself or me killed. I'll do my best, as always. And I'll turn and try to head back to the longhouse or wherever we're staying, the group is. Okay, so you return to the longhouse where you see uh, Mitnir uh, cleaning his scales and Seti um, not really doing much of anything vocal except for warm doing vocal warm-ups. <laughs> and you see Brapsy just covered in glittering fucking, like, so much gold. Jesus Christ. Okay. Every time I leave, something new happens. Anyway, Mitnir, come here for a moment. What? Okay. I got you and I into the party, as well as Cleary, but I'm not 100% sure if we should take him. Just figured he might want an out for a while, because he seems to not be doing well at all. Hmm. I do think like a change of scenery would be good for him, but I don't know. Like he's a really nervous. Like he might say something, or hmm. you know. That's my worry because hold up the ring. These will turn us into grung, apparently. So we need to act like it, or else we basically screw over. The Enchanter and the entire revolution. Wow, that's that's huge. Does it yeah, does it like great. wear off or is it like just permanent? Like as long as you're wearing the ring. He said f about four hours once a day. Hmm. That's pretty good. Maybe. Yeah. Oh man, I had to leave Cleary out again, but I think it might be the safest choice. Like, the less he knows, the better. That's... Wait, true. why would we need to leave him out? Who would... Well, just, like, he might let something slip, or, like, you know, if he does get caught with the ring, then, like, it gives away, like, you know, a probably mm. most powerful ally, maybe? Okay. It's not that I don't trust always... him, I just, you know, don't know how reliable he can be. That's true, and he doesn't seem particularly in charge of his facilities at the moment. Exactly. I just thought it might be a good idea. I don't know. I feel bad for the guy, all of a sudden. <laughs> I did you. It's not a good... I think the best thing we can do for Clary is get this over with like let's like we need to just move quick and be persuasive and do our best and then we can just all get out of here and get him back to his university but okay. you're saying you want me to turn into a grung you should definitely not be a red grung who me or him sorry Mitnir. why you should he not be a red be grung red okay I'm you don't want to be blue <laughs> And I don't want to be purple. It's going to be confusing for all of us. All right. <laughs> we basically just need to be high enough tier to actually passively get into this party. Unless you bring a servant. Well, I don't know if they're like, I mean, it sounded like a good idea, but what if they're like, oh, your servant is green or whatever? He has to stay outside. You don't need your own. So we have servants. You know that kind of thing. Yeah, maybe... Are we servants now? 
That's why we're pretending to, well, some of you are going to pretend to be Grant. So what if we were hired by visitors? Or I guess we're not hired. What if we were working for visitors to the park? I don't know. Okay, this basically gets us an in as part of some random edge of town grung noble family. So, if with this and the invitations, if we go as red grung, no one should ask too many questions. Sounds good to me. Okay, good. Minya, take this ring and just try not to draw too much attention to yourself. You also won't be able to hit things as hard as a grung. I'm sorry. That's kind of comes with the territory. I've never seen Grubja. Hmm. That's true. <laughs> nonetheless kind of just like takes the stuff like cool so we wait for it to start and then put on the rings when we'll have enough time to go to the party and not screw ourselves over I guess are you giving the third ring to another person or are you going to keep the other one on you does anyone else want to be a Grong? You got four rings total, right? Three. Three. Oh, three. Okay. No. So uh, Mitnir and I, idea. and then Seti's going with Bropsy. Auron is with the Prince. And if Cleary's not going, then I think we're all set. Right? Yeah, I'd say just keep it for safekeeping and, you know. Yeah. Don't. Lose it. Mm -mm. Right, so I'm gonna keep the third one. Although, like, what do you, like, I mean, what would it do to a grung? Would it just make them stay a grung or would it turn them into a different color? Because we could try to do, like, some sneaky. <laughs> like, what if Krabja just woke up one day and was yellow, right? That's true, but it would wear off at some point sure but the, those four hours would be freaking wild <laughs> and when we need to cause a distraction we will come to you Setimira. <laughs> okay good <laughs> i think that would be a really fun one cool <laughs> so as you guys all get prepared for the party to cross your T's and dot your eyes and put princes into nice outfits um, somewhere in the middle of the swamp working with an architect Cleary goes Hachi! I think somebody's talking about me <laughs> and we'll go ahead and take our break <laughs> hey. Poor Cleary. I tried to be nice. I feel bad about leaving him out, but also you know that every time something happens, he's like a big blubbering, flustered mess. Yeah. Oh you yeah, know. no. You guys didn't even tell him the revolution was a thing. So No, like, because we you... don't want him to give us away on accident. Yeah. He oh gets hit once and it's just like when the revolution comes <laughs> <laughs> You're all going to be sorry. <laughs> I have a friend in a black cloak. Yeah, there's a chance they just hit him again. <laughs> and then he's dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll take a break. Back in five, guys. guys. Thanks for hanging out. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. So, everybody prepares themselves for the party. And it's finally happening. <laughs> okay. The sun is setting over the <laughs> the Lurkwood. Not that you can tell, really. It just goes from fairly dim and dark to pretty dark. And uh, you guys find yourselves standing at the doorway of the <laughs> longhouse. I need to know what colors you guys are going for your grungs and how you guys want to stagger your arrival and all that stuff. 
probably just go red. I feel like orange has too many responsibilities. Okay. I guess I'll do red. <laughs> okay. And Nikita's wearing not Nikita. Brapsi is wearing her shiny outfit. What are you wearing? You're just wearing your normal thing though, right? I mean, yeah. I don't have anything else. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, who's going first, and how do you guys want to get there? Like, do you want to do you want to go together as a group of four, or do you what do you want to do? No, I think probably Brapsi and yeah, uh, Steady first. Sounds, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so following Brupsy, who has been there before, you find yourselves going up the long... Uh, <laughs> the elevators. <laughs> up, uh, up into the treetops and around... Um, and, and getting the, the view for the first time, you do realize she is actually above the bottomless falls. The eternal falls. Looking over the edge of this massive tree, you see it's actually on the edge of a cliff within the Lurkwood itself, and it seems to just be a massive pit with waterfalls dumping into it. You don't even see the bottom. That's um, impressive. When you, yeah, when you get to the actual... And it just looks like the swamp just sort of empties off into it. It's not like there's like a river or anything else like that. It's just like the, the swamp is just slowly dumping water. You're not even sure what the source of the rest of the water is coming from. You would expect this to be so much less murky, considering how much water's dumped off. Um, as you find your way um, heading Brapsi to the place where you have visited the Red Lady before, you find that that entrance has been blocked off. And instead you are sort of chauffeured, not chauffeured, what's the word? Shuffled? Ushered. Ushered, that's the word ushered along a different path towards the very center of the tree. Upon arrival, you see a massive, kind of ornately carved door in the center of the tree itself leading into the massive trunk. You all right there, Belen? <laughs> yeah, I just thought I heard something. <laughs> okay. Um, and upon arrival, you see, looking up at you, but down at you at the same time, is a uh, purple grung at the door. Invitations. And in the leaf. And an invitation for you. Looking at Seti. I'm the plus one. I sent word earlier and she was approved. Excuse me, Mammy Twill, I double check. And he sort of heads inside for a second, whispers to somebody, heads back out, waits for a moment. Another purple grung comes around, whispers something in his ear. He says, Hmm, and how would you like to be introduced? I'm Seti. Just Seti. Yep. Great. <laughs> and you? Uh, just Brapsy. How boring. So he leads do the I, two. If you want to get fancy, you can say, why did I get an accent last? <laughs> <laughs> Where did it come from? <laughs> If, if you really want to get fancy, you can say, Brapsy, uh, of the, the, where the fuck am I from? The, the, the airplane, how do I word the, 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 the airplane? It's the elemental plane, elemental plane of air. air. Yeah, okay, I, I needed, the, thank you. That. From the airplane. Um, <laughs> sure. That would be a secret, right? Just, yeah, that. Sure, whatever shit. that oh, is. And he leads you inside a little ways and then stops you and then says, Introducing Brotsy of the airplane. 
and sit there. <laughs> and then he just... <laughs> and the two of you walk inside. Um, looking in here, the walls are lit by something bioluminescent. So you get this cool, like, uh, sort of blue light all around you. And yet somehow it still feels warm, even with the blue light. Basically just because the outside swamp region is just so dark. When you step into this area and you look around, you did not expect to see something so lavish. There's um, the the two stairwells that run up to like a platform um, on either side, like grand ball stairs. Um, there's there's a large like buffet table against the far wall, and this entire area is like sixty feet across and three stories high, and it's just filled with Grung. There are red grung, orange grub, even gold grung here. And anyone that's not at least a red grung is pretty much serving the rest of them. You see the red lady is sitting up top on the second platform. And as you come in, she goes, Propsy. Hello, dear. Welcome. Please join me. And then like, you see some of the rest of them just, like, some of the other grung just sort of, mm, as said, he walks by. But a lot of the other red grung and gold, orange grung are looking at Bropsy just like, oh, 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 it's a burb. It's a burby burb. It's a burby burby burb. <laughs> like, just like you can hear, like, lots of oh my God. going all around you mm-hmm. um, as you head into this area. It's, it is extravagant. You can see that she has brought a lot of her riches out to be on display, including the statues that all of you guys had um, claimed. Mm -hmm. And uh, your shield is there as well, uh, as well as a couple of other shiny knickknacks that belong to you and others, like some really cool looking adventurers here just Mm -hmm. on display and pieces of art and piles of gold that nobody has any interest in. Nobody's taking any of this gold. It's just piles of gold just sitting around. Piles of platinum. Like, there's some nice shit in this place, and it's just all on full display. Nobody guarding it. Mm-hmm. Um, as you come in, she says, she says, please, please, Bropsy. Bropsy. Hi. All right, so you go up to, to, to the second floor to greet her. Mm-hmm. Okay, as you get up there, you see that there is a large circular table in the center of this this second deck. And there's like this lo- sort of like lavishly stuffed couch, um, but it's made out of what looks like old adventurer's clothes that have been like piled together and then stuffed with something. You have no idea what. And there's the even a couple of pillows that look like they're made out of alligator skin. Um, sitting in the center of this table, there is a bunch of small platters with steaks on them. Close. Um, and she is lounging around and she's got what looks like a strange fantasy hookah sitting there and she's lounging back on it. And she's like, welcome, Bropsy, please have some tea. And you see herself, she reaches down and she grabs like a little small steak and Mm. just. (laughs) Ah. I'm so happy that you were able to bring it. And who is your friend? Uh, this is a set. Oh shit! I forgot something I wanted to say before we got here. Anyway. I know. Uh, this is uh, my friend Seti. It's I, very nice to meet you, dear. I give a very deep uh, bow, very formal, very graceful, and I just say, "It is an honor to meet you, Melody. I have heard." I need the most wonderful things. Make a performance check. <laughs> Do you fall on your face? <laughs> 12? Uh, 12? Uh, yeah, so I mean, you 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 do it about as graceful as you can. To get like low enough because of how low this couch is and how low she is, to like really make it look like a bow. You get so low, it's a little awkward. You stumble a bit, but you, <laughs> you don't collapse or fall over or knock over the hookah that's sitting there. Um, as your hands splay out, like being like twice the size of everything else in here. Sure. She says, Oh, it's, it's, you're very well mannered. It's very good to meet you. Um, so, are you all here to, uh, are you here to enjoy the festivities? Or 
you merely here to accompany Miss Bropsy and uh, make her look so much more beautiful in comparison. No offense, dear. Well, none taken. It would not be possible but to um, illuminate the glorious shine that is Bropsy. Yes, thank you so much for wearing the outfit I had fashioned for you, Bropsy. You look so very, very rich. Uh, leave a re-roll on your bow. Oh, okay. on the bow. Thanks. Thanks, Helen. Oh I want a one. 18. 18. It's actually <laughs> no. really graceful. <laughs> even more, even more well than, than I thought. Ew. <laughs> so she says, <laughs> she says, please, please, Bropsy, sit here with me. And, like, she makes room. There's some other, like, grung there. They're definitely female grungs. Um, there's even one standing behind her that's, like, a blue female grung, you can tell. Uh, and she's, like, got, like, like a, like a pure white outfit on. And she's just, like, sort of standing there. And you can tell she's, like, a handmaid or something. Um, she says, I'm so very happy to have you here. I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of my suitors are here today. And then she, she points down, and you see Gromley is going... Barb! Barb! <laughs> In common. Hello, I wait back. And you can hear him just like... <laughs> just saying, you can't really make it out, but he's yeah. definitely bragging to the other other people down there that he knows you yeah. and that you're with the Red Lady. Yeah. Um, Looking around, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of individuals. Some of them you recognize. Um, but for you, Bropsy, that's pretty much it. For you, Seti, I don't think you've seen anybody other than um, you recognize one purple grung. Looks relatively familiar. You believe that he healed Arn that one time. Mm. At the very beginning of whenever you mm. guys are, uh, arrived there at Grumbalula. Right. Um, so, you guys are at the party. Um, and it is around this time, Mitnir and Reed arrive as Red Grung. As you arrive at the door, he says, The la 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 you're from a very old family, aren't you? Just gonna huff at him, just like... <laughs> so sorry, my Red Grung. Uh, uh, how would you like to be introduced? I'm gonna look to Greed first. <laughs> Imalub of the Ublublub clan. Imalub of Lublublub. And you? Rentim of same clan. Very well. He steps inside. He says, Imalub and Rentim of the Umlublublublublub clan. He had several extra loves just to make you guys sound that much more impressive. And some people go, Ooh, the Ula loves. Can't believe that they're here. Oh, wow, that's really incredible. And then uh, you guys enter. You, How do you enter? Do you try to make it like as fancy as possible or what? Uh, I will I'm say this. Aspects of your outfit changed with you. So you're wearing armor. Like like a simple breastplate. Or not, not no, you weren't wearing armor. Or you, what were you wearing? You were like... I, I just had like kind of like loincloth pants type things with the belt. Yeah, so you see so you're wearing that with a belt and like you look muscular even for a grung as you walk in like all manly and you see like wearing like sort of like short black robes and, and having like your you have your hat. Yay. So you walk in and so like it's the two of you and you walk in and I'm saying, I haven't, I haven't met this one before. Who, who, who's that guy? Man, that guy over there is pretty buff. Like, yeah. hi! Says Gromley. Like, it's so like you guys are like there's definitely a lot more whispers and, and, and talks as you guys enter the area. So the place is yours. You can go talk to whoever you want. Um you agreed to recognize some people from the council here. You recognize um specifically Field Marshal Bragg and Grand Archivist Chulub are both here. So even though Chulib is only a purple grung, he is in fact here. Okay. Um, 
Can I go up to the field marshal? Uh, sure. Yeah, definitely. This can only go well. As you approach him, you see he's sitting there, like sort of like kicked back, and he's just you know he he's typically a pretty quiet grong. Um, but you see he's eyeballing another grong on the other side of the room, like harshly. He's just staring at him. He's like grabbing some some alcohol and sipping it slightly and then putting it back down and his eyes are just locked across the room. Um, but as you approach, he sort of changes his eyes. He says, New Mario you be? I am Imalub of the Lub 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 clan. Imalub, huh? I haven't heard of you. Lub Lub Lub's days in... Some old families. That was, in fact, a sovereign from the Lub 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 Cram one back in the day. You know about that? I have heard but stories. Your uh, power exudes wonderfully through word, but even more magnificently in person. Flattery's not going to get you anywhere. Prove yourself to me, we can go for a bout, and I'll show you just how strong I am. <laughs> On the contrary, I don't find myself much of a fighter, but uh, my brother over here, and I point towards disguised Mitnir, wherever the hell he went. <laughs> Mitnir is looking around for the tea. He's just like... He's pretty strong, I'll tell you that. Mm. What's he do? Is he, uh... Do you got any battle prowess? Quite so. He is uh, one of the best fighters I have ever seen. Granted, I have not seen you fight, of course. Hmm. Perhaps I'll have to give him a run. That's assuming Sung Ba doesn't give me the time of day again. And he goes back to glaring across the room. Can I follow his eyeline? Yeah, you see across the way, sitting there very quietly, like on his knees, like in front of a small, short table, um, looking very proper. He's wearing a sort of um, tilted, like like Japanese style, those big rice paddy field hats. He's wearing, uh, like he looks like a fucking samurai, like a like a Ronin samurai. Okay, he's got. He's got um, two katana on his side, and he is a pure red grung with several scars across his face. Bad blood? Would this be the one that uh, the legend speaks of? We go on the front once about a time. Never really came to a conclusion. Great Samurai Sungba. I'd like to take him down a peg. And what has prevented a rematch? I don't know. Not like I'm about to go down there and stab in the back or nothing. But he doesn't think I'm worth his time. Piss me off a few times here. But you don't attack one of the old royal guard for no reason. I need to get him to accept a challenge. So I'm buying my time trying to think of a good thing to do to stir him up at this party. Hmm. I see. Well, if I can think of anything, I'll let you know. I'm always down to watch a good fight. Yeah. You help me out. I owe you one. You seem like the talking kind. I think you can get something started here. I'll be, I'll be very grateful if you have any ideas. I'll keep my eye out and see if there's anything I can think of. All right, run along, Lulla Lub. I kind of tip my hat and go back towards Mitnir. Just goes back Are to you me. wearing a fedora? No, it's yeah. my witch's hat. Same thing I've been wearing. The way, the way you said it, I had to check. 
<laughs> also, are you, are you the only Grung wearing a witch hat? Yep. Okay. Don't be jealous. Uh -huh. I mean, the Love Love Loves are known for being very eccentric. Like, so. Nobody's really bad at a lat. Like, bad does he still eye. have a book floating around? <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I mean, like, you can put it in your cloak if you want, but, you know, if you. Yeah, I'd probably hide that because they've, I assume, yeah, I mean... seen my book. As long as it stays within, like, I think it's five feet. If it stays within five feet of you, you're good. But if you leave five feet, it will just float behind you. Yeah, I'll keep it hidden. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys are at the party. What would you like to do? Is there anybody specific you would like to talk to? I'm just going to tell Mitnir, uh, that grung over there, and I point to the field marshal, right. really likes fighting. So you're picking which a fight seems with up your alley. Why? No, no, I no. I'm not. Mitnir, I know two things about you. One is that you enjoy fighting, and the other, I cannot say out loud because we're frogs. And I send him the telepathic message. The other is that you're a blue dragon. That's it. <laughs> Mitnir has like one finger. He's like, yet. Yeah. Okay, both of these are true. Yeah. Yes. So there's that. But also, if you can think of a way to get him, and I point to the samurai, to fight him, and I point to the field marshal, then the field marshal might be on our side and. He's apparently super influential from what I've seen. Hmm. So either we get him to fight the other guy or you show him power and we might have an end. Do, do you want me to do that like this? Not particularly. Good, because it's just throwing ideas out there. That's fair. Just throwing things out into the air for you to think on. Have you seen the tea? Can I see the tea? Um, with the exception of like, there's, there's like a buffet table, but there's no tea on it yet. With the exception of what seems to be the tea that um, is up on the second floor where the red lady is, nobody seems to have any yet. Not yet, but there's a buffet table over there with other shit. Should we go take a look then? I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> sure, let's go feed you. <laughs> so you. Go over and you look at the table. Out of respect for Nikita, I will not describe what is on the table. Thank you. But to a grong, you imagine it probably looks pretty tasty. So to us, does it look tasty? With the exception of the one section small, like there's like a single like circular platter covered in something that looks similar to what uh, Arin had described as being sashimi. With the exception of that one platter, doesn't look great. <laughs> Disappointed. Well, we'll make sure there's to get a lot you of alcohol, though. There are, there are multiple casks of alcohol. That, that might make up for it, though. I mean, if Points nothing else, we can always just get pissed drunk and let Bropsy and Sati do it all. That, like, the you can see behind his eyes, like, the that's not a bad idea. <laughs> all right. So as you guys um, are having this conversation up from above, you hear the red lady, and this is for you guys too. She's, excuse me for a second, darlings. I must serve tea. And she gets up and she takes her steak and she takes out what looks like some, it might be a spoon or something and starts smacking it. So you guys hear this sort of noise. 
coming, like just wet smacking sound coming. And she says, oh, so, so not. Yeah, not that, but instead of wet oh, okay. smacking sound, she slaps the tea. Hey, here, says, I was going to try to help. Fine. <laughs> she says, attention all. Tea is about to be served. Please remember, Pinky's out. Don't embarrass me. All you silly, silly men. And he watches they go, oh, <gasps> like arrow through the heart. Like, she's so pretty. Um, <laughs> Two of us are just standing there, no reaction. You see several, several <laughs> grown um, coming out together, holding like what looks like a table on a couple of different racks. And they're walking out with sliced velociraptors. The ones that you had killed. So the head of the Velociraptors at the front, and then the rest of it sliced up into like sections laid out. The organs have all been removed and everything, but it's like it's like the head's there, the tail's there, and then the legs are there. And it's sort of and then in the body, they just like hollowed it out and made like piles of tea. So like what people do with fish. Yeah, like with fish or like a, a hog or something like that. Like it Gotcha. It's got this kind of look to it. Please. Dig in, everyone. It's now that I've seen a raptor, can I turn into a raptor? Oh, you can turn into a dead sliced raptor. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, you, you know what's an animal now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The closest she'll ever get to a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> I have okay. goals and dreams. Fight me. Um, so they've got that set up. Tea is served, um, and everybody is mingling. Is there anybody that the two of you would like to talk to? Um, the red lady sits back down. She has more tea, and she just goes talking to various suitors keep approaching her one by one, and you see that they, they give her fancy flowers, um, some just whisper things. She says, so you can all wait till later. Sit. It is important that I give your lovely ladyship as many nice things throughout the evening as possible. Oh, yes, of course, of course. But there is a time that... I know, this is just the preamble of my courtship. I'm like, oh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And every time each one of them leaves, she just turns to Brox and she says, Oh, my God. It's so <laughs> exhausting. I know. Did you think Could any I... of them were cute? Really, be honest with me. Um, I... I think you remember where my affections lie and I will um, not subtly turn to Seppi and reach my hand out. You meet a babe. Oh, <laughs> I just go with it. I'm, I don't know if I know the, the what's been going on here. So I'll just... She looks um, and she says, the two of you are... Oh my. <laughs> Oh, oh, interesting. Oh, ah, uh, shoo, 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 shoo. Tell me all about this. How does it work? And uh, what, what part of, what? Part of it? How does it work? Falling in love? <laughs> She's very awkward. What got away from this conversation is you explained it. <laughs> how, how two ladies work. Um, is she okay? Here, here's my question: Is she asking about lady romance or lady sex gag? That's kind of an important we're distinction. Not sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna start off explaining love, and then we'll see. We'll see if that satisfies her. Seti will throw in a little bit of like, I mean, it was who could see such beauty as Brapsi and not immediately fall in love and just kind of be, <laughs> feed into this whole mythology uh, they built up. For our shtick, this is a budding love, okay? I'm not gonna tell her that we've been together forever. It's okay. new. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, I don't... Your lady... <laughs> oh, red lady... <laughs> Oh, red lady, excuse me. I know I'm an old gum, but I wanna... Shoo, shut up! I'm talking <laughs> here! <laughs> Do pardon us for having a lady talk. 
<laughs> and he walks off. No. Oh. He looks very sad. Uh, meanwhile, as this is going on, you hear... <clears throat> and you see an orange grung walk out in a very nice outfit. And he takes like a little horn and goes... Announcing his loyal lord, the sovereign, his great grung ship, Brambala, and the lady grung ship. Let me look up her name. <laughs> Sorry, I keep forgetting. Mm -hmm. Lady! Gigi gum! And you watch as they come in to golden grungs. Resplendent and in beautiful outfits. Pure white silks. In gold embroidery. They walk in. Their heads held high. She is about three feet tall. He is two and a half. Even among the grungs, he looks short and squat and fat and lame. And as he walks inside, he goes, Hello, my loyal subjects. And he watches they all get down and kneel. He says, hmm, very good. I'll I'm so suit. excited to be here today. I assume I assumed you were gonna bow in there. Oh, sorry. The only one I'm worried about is the Mitnir. <laughs> no, well, like no, when Greed starts to do it, it's like, oh, right. It has like tea like half in his mouth, it's like feel. <laughs> Very good. Oh. Very jolly. It's good to see you, Grammarly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he just passes by each one of them. The female grung is actually like her skin is beautiful like you see like little like you know pox and, and boils and and other things on these on these grung but her skin is like perfectly she looks like a dart frog she's just so clean and sleek she looks like a shiny car <laughs> and so she walks by it's it's like just gold and white and for a grung she's beautiful as she walks by and then he says <laughs> where is my and then you see the um, red lady stands up. She says, oh, of course, my lord. Your throne is just below here. We'll get it set up for you in just a moment. I wasn't sure if you were going to be arriving this early. Mm, thank you. I will expect it there before I make a full pass. And he continues walking around the room, greeting a couple of different grongs. You see he stops at Sungba. And you see that one nods to him, bows out. And sat for a short conversation. You see behind him, there is a procession of red grung that are also wearing like samurai garbs. And they all have like katanas on their sides. They look like like a royal guard. Behind that, you hear another announcement that says, Announcing the next group! We announce the Prime Riveter! And Prince Grunglum! You enter right behind them, Orin. Uh, ahead of Orin is a very stern looking orange grung. He is probably three and a half feet tall. He's even taller than the rest of them. And he's lanky and he's skinny and he wears like a long robe that drags. Um, and he looks just like the, the pissiest old grung you've ever seen in your life. And then you see Prince. Grumlin is, is, is with him, and behind them, so much taller. You see Auron just ducking his way into the building. And Do I just... get an introduction? Mm -mm. Damn it. I had a good one lined up, too. <laughs> you were a servant, and you were not introduced. So you see, as every time that you look somewhere else, you see um, that Prince Grumlin has a stick, and he just keeps flopping you. Not very hard, but he keeps flopping you, Auron. Thing. For appearance purposes, I'm just wearing... I'm not wearing my robe or my mask. Mm -hmm. Just my sleeveless, uh, like, monk vest and monk pants. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
So he hits you constantly, and everybody's like, "Oh, that's that's that's, that's so cool, Prince Grumble." And he's like, he's like, "Yes, isn't it? Look at my fancy, fancy servant. He's my personal, he's my personal servant. Don't you know? Look at his golden hair. Hmm, almost as gold as me." And you can see he's like showing off and playing the part of the prince very well. The prime riveter doesn't say a single word, but just walks across the room and follows um, his grongship and lady grongship. Um, chairs are brought out, and you find them actually having a throne set in the center back below the staircases on a slightly raised platform within the tree. And everybody sort of like settles in and waits for a moment. He says, It is very good to be here. Let's all begin our festivities. And you hear uh, the red lady say, Oh, uh, 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 of course. <clears throat> Thank you all so much for coming. Um, I would like to introduce um, Slave Master Gerbit. He's prepared special entertainment for all of us this evening, but also please enjoy the tea. And you see a couple of them go, Hey! <laughs> Raise up their meat. Um, this individual steps out, and you guys all recognize Slave Master Gerbit as he walks out and he says, Hello. <clears throat> we have some very interesting things here today we have with us three prize slaves young children of very exotic races and they can be one there are three different tokens you can win and each of the events in first place you get first choice for the token Second place, second choice, third place, third. The person with the most tokens of each kind receives the prize. If you have any questions, direct them to her red lady, and she will explain. But I assure you, these are very unique creatures. One, a mimicking bird. Anything that you wish to say can say back to you, like a recording device. And seeing as it is young, it can be well trained. The second, very interesting creature. It is like a grum, but it wears a shell on its back. Very young indeed. And the third is an earth dwelling creature. The small beard. I hear they make wonderful blacksmiths. So, a good one to get on your personal payroll. Well, your personal servants, anyways. <laughs> your lady, back to you. Yes, as he said, um, there are some rewards, and and the system is as follows. You can participate in anything you like, and. And, and whoever wins them can take the prize home with them. Um, anyone can participate. Uh, I really hope you all have the grandest of times. Um, we, we will participate in this. Um, I don't know if she would notice, but perhaps he has a face of sheer terror. Um, no, she's dressing the entire crowd right now. Okay. So. so she says, um, So, the first competition will be Twister. We will begin that in five minutes while we set up the board. And um, yes, thank you all for coming. And be sure to pay your respects to his grungship. Yes, pay respects to his grungship. Thank you. So, they, you haven't seen these slaves or anything like that that are being presented as prizes, but they are children. Mm -hmm. So. Is so up to you guys what you want to do? There are five minutes till the party starts. Or the party starts, not the yeah, game starts. So when, when that happened, uh, that see, uh, uh, has a faraway look in her eyes and reached her hand out to Sethi and just kind of give a like <laughs> reassuring squeeze. It's like, oh man. Slaves, slaves are one thing with children. Um, we have to do something. Let me 
check something. Yeah, so I'm just gonna reply with like a message so that nobody else can hear. Just be like, we are doing something. Stay strong. We just had to get through this and hope that we can do enough here to make the suffering there might be really, really short. Perhaps okay. Well, Sorry. Good. I was just going to say, struggling to contain herself, but trying to keep her breathing in check. Okay, um, so you guys watch as they set up the board for Twister. Rather than painting colors on the ground, you actually see different colored grung come down, get on their hands and knees, and sort of like scrunch up into little balls Frog in gloves. rows of different colors. So you see a row of green grungs. You see a row next to that of blue grungs, and then a row of purple grungs next to them. And there are no red grungs or orange grungs or <laughs> any grungs above that, obviously, getting down on hands and knees and anything like that. But instead you have those three different colors and they sort of, um, they sort of like bend around. So there's like different sections, different colors. And um, you watch as everybody sort of starts surrounding and getting excited. Does anybody want to participate? In or it's Oh, I was going to ask, do they have, like, clothing on, or are they, like, barebacked? They're barebacked. It is expected for you to um. use them as where you are, you're stepping on the frogs, as, on the other grung, as, as a placement for your Twister game. That's true Twister for them. Uh, I would like to use the distraction to try to palm some tea, as promised. To just to, to put away for our friends. She wants to fill her purse with tea. <laughs> uh, uh, make a sleight of hand check, I guess. <laughs> come on, baby. Eight, come on! Oh, oh god. god yeah, I mean, like, the, the red lady sees you take god. some, and she just says, Oh dear, please, please pack as much as you want. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't so even when we fill it. <laughs> so when we're transformed into Grung, are we immune to the effects of Grung? That's a good question. To the effects of Grung poison? Yeah, because we are a uh, Grung. That's a good question. Let's find out what Grung's. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're immune like, to poison. Uh... We should participate and try to get those kids out. I just want to win. Good enough. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, so you see these two red grungs that you guys don't recognize. I don't think you got to see them transformed because there's mm -hmm. no way you guys no, we have are dumb no enough to transform <laughs> in the thing. Uh, the witch's hat stands out to you. So you do when you see... Oh, okay, yeah. If it's if We've seen that hat before and now there is a grung yeah. wearing Can that I hat. look up and kind of give a slight nod to let them know who I am? Yeah, as you go to prepare for, for Twister. Aaron, you are seated, or you're not seated, but you're standing behind Gremlin, who is seated on the opposite side of this, like, four-chair sort of setup in the throne area. Um, on the opposite side of, of him is the Prime Ribbiter, the next to him is the Sovereign, his Grungship, and then next to um, him is the, directly next to the Prince is the Lady Grungship, his mom. Quote -unquote. The families are weird. It's hard to describe them because yeah, nobody's yeah. actually related to the bird people that are in their family. Well, so, they could be. <laughs> there's a chance. It's fully Can possible. Brother and sister are on the throne right now. You don't know. Yeah, and that's why there's so much inbreeding and crap. So, <laughs> anyways, um, so you are standing there next to him, and he says, "Would you like to participate?" What's you can do whatever you like. You can... Oh, well, no, I'm good. You're welcome to s spill some wine whenever you want to get to your thing. It's fine. Did you want me to fetch you a beverage, your lordship? God, I feel awkward. 
Oh shit! And he starts hitting you with a stick. Give me some. Give me some wine. Is it, is it like a <laughs> the orange grung walks by? Right goes, away, sir. Hmm. And just nods to him. It's like it's so hard to find good help. <laughs> uh. So, uh, as far as I can tell, the Bropsy said you guys aren't going to participate in Twister. I mean, no. that would be toxic to us, right? Yeah, I don't want to get poisoned. You don't know. It's up to you if you want to attempt to do it or not. I do send, I'm going to send a message to the one I think is Greed and just be like, uh-huh. so y'all are going to try to win those kids, right? But it's... I can respond a message, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's only like two kids that you could win if you both win everything. Should I, <laughs> should I try to get the third? I don't know if they're poisonous, but I mean, two kids is better than none, right? I just nod. Kind of shrugs and goes back to focusing on whatever the hell this Twister game is going to entail. All right. Hey, Brapsy, if I get poisoned by Grung Skin, you could help me out, right? I, I have, I have a thing. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I will. I will try to get. Yes, and then. Um, but maybe you could put in a word with the red lady about me performing later, if I don't die of poison. Perhaps uh, I should do this one. Well, but then you wouldn't. If you get poisoned, you wouldn't be able to unpoison yourself. Can I? Can I not do that? I don't know. I don't know what spells you got and what works. It depends, uh, I depends how bad protection poison, from poison. Was. If you were unconscious. <laughs> uh, well, I have protection from poison. Yeah, I mean, if you use protection from poison, I think that lasts for a certain amount of time. It's, yeah, it's one hour. Yeah, you can just cast protection from poison. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well... Anyways, they're finished setting up, and there's people circling around the area, and they're getting ready to set up for Twister, so is that what you're going to do? <laughs> I mean, but who's... I was just saying, because I have the higher decks, I think. I have a 16. Oh, do you? What do I have? Shit, where's my page? Hey, you know, you can both do it if you want. I mean, yeah, just... we could. Okay. That's I can true. Cast Increase our both. odds. I don't know. Okay, done going. <laughs> Alright, so you're heading down there. We have the same decks. So you see Seti just takes off because they're about to start. You already see like <laughs> the first one saying, right hand, green grung. So like there's already people getting there. It's getting getting started. Uh when it gets to you, Mitnir, uh, we've got um Yeah, right hand, blue grung. It's easy okay. enough to put your right hand. There's no DC for this, but it's just going to get higher and higher as things go by. Um, you, Reed, right hand, red grung, or I not red grung, orange red. grung, orange grung, or, or the other one, the purple grung, purple grung. Okay. <laughs> what are you talking about? You put your hand on another plate. <laughs> right. I do so. For giggles, I'm going to say that there's also red grung here, but they're doing it for fun. Because it's just silly and goofy. So I can do D4s and mm-hmm. they'll just make things easier. So, Makes yes. Sense. Right hand, red grung. Okay. Easy enough. Seti, are you there to play? Yep. Have you had a spell cast on you somehow before you made it down mm-hmm. here? Because I'm not sure that Depends. there was time for that to happen. Wait, how many spell slots do I have? <laughs> I have no idea. But you, you can't, you'd be casting spell as a servant in public. Well, she could so, try to. It depends. Like, is it is it touch? Is it like somatic? It's just she have touch. To, I don't. There's there should be, if it says somatic and or verbal whatever, or... verbal somatic, then you have to do a sleight of hand check, or they're gonna see you cast. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. Wait, would I be able to do it on myself without doing that stuff? Uh, it should be it should be listed. What is It'll, it? So it is. It's verbal and somatic. So you have to say yeah. some words and make some hand gestures. So mm-hmm. they it, there is a 
higher chance of getting noticed. So I'd have to roll anyway. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna okay. do that without anybody noticing, you have to do it. It's easier to do it on yourself. We'll have a lower day C, but doing it to SETI while she's okay. already taken off to go down there, probably a lot harder. Okay, well I'll, I'll do it on myself and that's it. Um Okay, make me a side hand check. Because I don't want to get caught. Um hopefully I don't get fucked. Dolive, hopefully you'll save me if I get fucked. <laughs> um I'll give Dollar a little bit of se- yes, I'll give Dollar a uh, <laughs> second to, to try to change that. Otherwise, we're moving on. Uh, While well, that's happening, we're we're right. 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 Hey, there it is. <laughs> All right, so, what'd you say? Uh, it's about time for me to hop out of here. Okay, we'll just, we'll just, because we're going to end before too long here in a second anyway. Oh. So. Okay. Because that's cool. We're, we'll just set up real quick, and you can go ahead and leave if you want. And we'll just roll okay. some d twenty three. Yeah, that works. Oop. Thanks. Have fun. Don't All die. Right, babe, just change the screen for us, babe. It's already changed. It's just capturing the one wrong window for some reason. Uh, okay. Uh, twenty one. Yeah, you're able to do it without anybody noticing by some stroke of brilliance. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> SETI. I guess you're not getting it. So for you, what did what was you? Um, th- what did I say that yours was? Uh, my what? Oh, I guess you didn't have yours yet. Okay, so that's left foot. Uh, purple girl. Okay, I do that. Okay, luckily you are wearing shoes, so <laughs> no poisoning yet. You don't have to make any. De- any saving throw. Well, yeah. and I think my like, if they gave me my full complement of clothes back, I do have gloves. But I probably took them off for the the politeness of it. Right. Either way, I'm not gonna just let you be immune to the poison effects. Just no, <laughs> I, no, I know. Gonna be covered in all this slime in a minute. All right, Bropsy, you are left foot green. Okay. Okay, so you guys are all set up and ready to go. Uh, the DC is going to get increasingly higher as we do with these dexterity checks. So just get ready to hit that dex button. Are you ready to go? Sure. <laughs> My plus zero to dex. It's going to be great. All right, so. So we had, um, please keep track of what you were touching before. I'm going to have a hard time. Oh, God. I'm just going to roll a d20 for nude. Just over and over again. Um, you should be fine for the first one. <clears throat> Unless he has a plus zero. All right. So um, we get to greed. And he says, right foot purple. I don't know what you're currently on. So My right hand was on red. Right hand red. Yeah, so that should be easy enough to do because the other ones on the other side, they're pretty far apart. Like, you'd have to, like, find a way to either reach across. Th- that's a much higher DC. So what did you roll? 12. You're fine. Cool. So you're just like one. Boom, boom. So you got yourself splayed out pretty, pretty. Uh, and as you do it, you feel the grung just going. There you go. Right hand red. Left foot green. All right. So SETI. That's going to be right foot purple. I think my right foot is already on purple. Then you don't have to do anything else. <laughs> oh, lucky this one. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Bropsy. <laughs> uh, that is left hand green. So you've got your left foot and your left hand on green. So you're not going to fail that unless you roll natural one. So go ahead and write me. Just go ahead and still roll me a deck check. Brapsy. I think Mood was uh, right hand purple on his first one, right? Yeah, that's okay. I'm just. <laughs> I, I can keep track in the chat here. Okay, well, that's okay. I just rolled a natural one for him, so he slips on his next go. Oh, so he's <laughs> out. Oh, and he fell to the ground, he's just like, oh, damn, better go eat some tea. And he just gets up and just <laughs> goes start snacking on some meat. Um, Did you roll? Nikita, for... Yeah, I got a 12. 12, you're fine. 
Okay, okay. Oh, we're already having some people fall out. Oh, look at that guy. <laughs> he sucks. And you watch as like a guy, uh, one of the other grung slips, and he grabs the the grung he slipped on, and he starts beating him viciously. So it's your fault, I feel. I really wanted that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like it's it's not nice. Uh, cool. So we go to uh, <laughs> that is right foot, um, purple. For who? For for greed. Greed's first. I was already there. Look at you. That's so good for you. <laughs> Do I still need to dex check, or am I nope. just allowed to stay? <laughs> nope, you're okay for now. Because that's actually going to be a strength check for... I think it's a strength or is it constitution for just holding position now for a time. Constitution. Totally. <laughs> I think it's probably strength, but, but not Fuck. yet, though. You're I would also say constitution, but right. yeah, yeah, con, left, con, left, okay, con. Left hand blue, Seti. Okay, here goes. I got my right foot on purple, and my left hand is just going down to touch blue. All right, make me a dex check. <laughs> and then make me a constitution saving 16. throw. 16, and what? Constitution saving throw. 14. 14. Um, as you touch it, you feel like almost like a jolt of electricity go through your body as you touch this grung, and it's just like, oof. But you shake it off. Uh, four and four. Um, Brapsi, you are right hand red. Oh, ho, ho. So I need you to make a dex check. You're looking, that's like on the opposite side, so you really got to stretch for that. Eight. Eight. Brapsy eats it. Uh, she slips off of this and goes, Oh, and the bird goes down. Well, wow, we're really thinning their herd here, guys. We only got four competitors left. And you see Gromley is still up there going, <laughs> and just like stretching out between a bunch of them. Um, and then there's a couple of other Grong you don't recognize. And, um, and then Greed and Seti are both still up. Greed. That is uh, right foot purple. <laughs> so <you're>... Well. <laughs> Works for you, but I do need you to make me a constitution saving throw. Or a constitution check. Oh, just a check? Oh, shit. All right. Hold yourself together. Do you have any Six. other limbs anywhere else, or is it just your foot? No, it's his it's foot. It's my and hand hand. and my foot. Oh, okay. So he's just right sitting there, and he's been sitting there. He hasn't gotten to move this whole time, and he collapses. Damn it, greed! It's up to you, Seti. Oh, we're losing people left and right. So right now, uh, there's there are only three left. It's you, Gromley, and somebody who you don't recognize. So, can I try to vicious mockery? Grumly. It's just <laughs> verbal, so if I just berate him. I was thinking about doing the same thing. <laughs> uh, right hand green, babe. Oh, uh, okay, so I got left hand on blue, right foot on purple. Right hand is going to try to reach. This is a harder one. Uh, 13. Do you succeed? I need a constitution saving throw. Come on, baby. Next time we do this, I'm doing bardic inspirations around the table for 17. 17. Still up, not poisoned. You shake it off. You feel like a yeah. really different thing go through your system. Like for a second, you're like, <laughs> and you're just, hmm, no. As mm -hmm. like these mixture of different poisons are like giving like these, you can feel these effects start to come over you, but you just shake them off. Um, you're still holding together. Um, somebody go. Oh, actually, I'll just roll for it. Oh shit! The other guy goes down. Gromley's still holding on. So it's just you and Gromley now, and he's like, ho oh, ho ho. We're going to win. You versus me. I'm going to beat you. <laughs> Don't count on it. Uh, that's going to be um, left foot uh -oh. blue. Okay, so that just comes down next to my hand that is on blue. I now have all four limbs somewhere. 22. 22. All right. He's going for his natural one. He collapses. 
Uh, and I assume I need to make another constitution save. Uh, that yes, you do. 16. 16? Uh, you, you feel yourself just... <laughs> and we have a winner! And you get up and you're like... Ooh, 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 ooh. You can definitely feel like a bit of something going through your hands. Your hands are like stiff and 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 you feel a little giggly and a little jittery. That um, is some crazy shit. <laughs> wow. It says, we have a winner. All right, so, Gromley, you get to choose second, you get third. So, what is your choice? Would you like a bird token? A shell token? Or a beard token? Oh, uh, um, I will take the bird token. Okay, so they give you the bird token. Gromley, which one do you want? Oh, I wanted the burp token. Well, you gotta choose a different one, Gromley. Oh. Hey, burb! Yeah? Which one should I choose? Uh, what are the other two? The shell and what? Shell and the beard. Uh, the, the shell? Okay. Okay. And then he takes a shell token, and the last one takes a beard token. Um... All right, very nice, very nice. We did the, the, the first round. As an added bonus, we will now show you the actual prizes just to get you excited. And so you see a door open in the back and you see um, a very small, cute little black kanku bird comes out, walks forward and just like looks really like nervous and confused about what's going on. They're not not friends or anything, they're just confused. So they walk out and they say, and then and, and, and Grong is just like, grung, 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 but says, this one here's a kenku, and then each, they they nudge the bird, and it goes. This one here's a kenku, and repeats like in exactly the same words what it says, and it's just like really like shy looking, and it's got like bulby, cute little eyes. Um, then the next one comes out, and it's a little baby turtle, and it's just like looks really nerdy, and like stretchy, and just like. Like, this one's got a really hard shell. It's called a turtle. And he just cracks it on the shell and its head goes inside of its body and it just like... Pfft. And it just brings all of its legs inside and they sort of like turns into a like turtles. And this last one... And you guys watch as Fjorn walks out. Yep. Oh, shit. <laughs> and he, as he walks out, he looks over and he sees Bropsy... And his eyes light up for a second. This one's called a dwarf. And he pulls a beard out of his face. He goes, ah, that is not very nice to not pull my beard. <laughs> and he has the beard and he says, and he's just a kid. And he grows a beard. Ah, got you excited, doesn't it? All right. Send him hey. all back. Wait, the, the kid that I thought was dead? Yep. The kid that launched me into depression? That's, That's why I thought about taking the beard token. Ah, okay. Fjorn is alive, and he is a prize for these games, and that's where we're going to end our session.